How can we be prepared? Be obedient to what Father tells you to do. Anyone read the Old Testament lately? <laughs> Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Samuel. Obedience brings blessing. Disobedience brings judgment, curses, bad stuff. Now God is in the New Testament and he's got grace, mercy, loving kindness, long suffering, gentleness, patience, peace. Let him hold you when you aren't obedient. Don't run from him when you're not obedient. Let him hold you. Daddy, I'm sorry. Help me. Help me. Help me. I don't have the desire. You told me to get up and pray with you, but I, I just, I don't know how. Don't try to overcome in your own will. You will not succeed. And if you do succeed, you may be proud of it. Therefore, Satan's got you anyways. And now this is for me. This may not be for everybody, but I'm, it's, it's, I don't know. I think it's for most everybody. <laughs> you decide. God is, this is, this is God's word to you. And if it doesn't fit, it doesn't matter to me. If it fits, put the shoe on. My mom always says, if the shoe fits, wear it. Right, mom? <laughs> so first and foremost, you need to spend time with Father. He's eagerly waiting to spend more time with you. Read his word. How many times has Dave exhorted us to read the word? Not out of legalism. I did that. I'm a poor example of that. I went to school and I read and prayed every day for whatever the, the hour. Could you not tarry one hour was the message of the time. I did all that. I had 15 minutes of this, 15 minutes of that, 15 minutes of this. Boom, boom, boom. My hour's up. Time to go. And, and then I sat down with God one day and says, God, I was wondering what you want to say to me. What do you want to say to me? I want you to stop reading and praying. And I, didn't, I promised I would never preach that from the pulpit. I'm not preaching to do that. That's what he told me to do. I needed to be obedient to that. I did. Then he told me to not worship anymore, to go to the back of the auditorium, fold my hands, and sit. I used to be a pew-jumping, devil-shoving guy up here, flipping around, doing stuff. And he took me to the back, and he had me sit. He goes, if you can't worship me sitting down, folding your hands, what makes you think what you're doing up here is worship? And then he restored to me prayer and restored to me scripture and now he said read this i open up where he told me to go and i practice that i mean sometimes he's but god write down what he told you and then if it's like something that doesn't exist oh well you're practicing prime the pump practice hearing from him and and it was i read a scripture the first time out i read it i'm like where was that in the bible i've read the bible through by that time i don't know how many times and I never saw that scripture, but now it became living, breathing, and it like has a tendency to, <laughs> <laughs> and like, oh wow, that's amazing. And then you want you get all excited about it and want to go share it with everybody because it's new. But and they're like going, I knew that. <laughs> Don't get discouraged when they do that. Just be happy that they have it too. Journal what he speaks to you and share with your spouse. Charlie Hoke, years and years and years and years ago, got me journaling. I was 16. I got my journals when I was 16. He said, just talk with God and write it down. If, it's, if, if what you hear from God isn't from God, you can read it and say it wasn't from God. It's usually not from Satan because I'm not asking him to speak to me. I'm asking God to speak to me. But on occasion, my flesh and my mind, the things that I know about other people sneak in. And it changes a little bit. So then I became accountable to that. If it affected my life in any way, shape, or form, I submit it to accountability people. I don't want their opinion. I want them to pray. God told me to go to school. He told me to go back to school. And I thought I was supposed to sell my house and go back to Dallas. And my accountability said, we believe, we've been praying, we agree with you. You're supposed to go back to school. That's really exciting. <laughs> But we think maybe not selling the house quite yet. We don't have peace with that. Wait for that for God's timing. So I waited, and it was God's will. And I could go on and on and on and on, going to Australia, different things that God told me to do. Um, but those are, those are the big things. The small things are, first thing he'll tell you when you start journaling, every single time, I love you. Yeah. Every time, I love you, my son. I'm so proud of you. I rejoice over you with singing. It's like a standing ovation of people applauding you when you talk with God. It's just like, but why? I don't deserve. I wasn't. He goes, you're that awesome. You're so great. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so there it is. <clears throat> Another step, expect the Father to work. 
Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? What are we expecting from the Father? You know, if, if our bank called us up, this will never happen. This is an illustration. If the bank ever call us up and say, you know, hey, Matt, you've been a great customer. We have like a trillion dollars we need to give away. If you show up, <laughs> in faith, let's believe. <laughs> and, and he says, well, you just have to come tomorrow, and whatever you can carry out on your own, you can have. So I have to carry it now. It'll all be in dollar bills, whatever you can carry out. This is what God's offering you now. He's offering you the ultimate freedom. You, money can't buy what God can give you. Yeah. And God's offering you everything. So if the bank offers you a trillion dollars, here's my illustration, and we show up the next day like this, you would all think that I'm pretty close to being an idiot. Now, if I could have two more up here on my back, I was going to do a, uh, yeah. You got the picture? Yeah. What are we expecting God to give? This is, won't contain it, and he doesn't make us carry it. He calls it the overflow. <coughs> awesome, God. Thank you, Father. <coughs> Who wants to be free? Here's the cycle of joy. In, instead of pride, you go through the sin, you go through the guilt and shame and blame and consequences. Break into humility, which you can't do on your own, in your own will, and your own strength. You have to ask God to do it. He will break you. He'll bring you down, and he'll set you free. You have to give up everything he gave you. You have to give up your books of learning, your worship, the things that you thought were so great that God gave you previously. He wants you to give them up. He wants you to give him up. He wants you naked before him. Because yeah. those things can't save you. Yes, he gave you the sword. He gave you the ability to, to teach, to preach, to study the word. He wants you to give it up. But God, you gave me this. I can't use you right now because you're doing it with your own strength. He gave me the ability to, 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 to do music. Give it up. I can't use you when you are in the flesh like this. and whatever else you can think of. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll tell you what to do. We need to stop asking him what we want and start asking him for what he wants to give us. And this will change your life. That very prayer will change your life. And he'll start asking you to ask him for stuff, but it's in his will now. I was sitting in my driveway with a broken down car years and years ago, and I got so mad. Why do I have to live with these junky old cars? I don't know how. And this is, God said, ask me. No, he asked, said, he says, I want you to ask me to bless you with a vehicle. I said, okay, God, would you bless me with a vehicle? I've never had a problem car since. He wanted me to ask him for that. I didn't ask him first. I asked him what he wanted. He asked me to ask for it. There's a difference there. That's his will being prayed versus my will, my wants, and my desires. And hopefully that's a clarification. So here's the two circles. <coughs> you can choose. It's your choice. 